Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Kirby's Dream Land 3. Today we're going to be finishing up the rest of uh, World 5, and after that we should be able to open up the last part of the game. Now this being a level 5 level, uh, we do need to take an animal buddy to the very end of the level, and this time it's Nago. And you're probably wondering why I have Nego with me, because I ended the last video without him. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed him from another level before I came here, because Nego is actually not available in this level at all, so you have to bring him from another level. You will be taunted with all of the other animal buddies like this, but that won't work, you need Nego, so just remember that and you should be fine. I wouldn't consider this a really hard challenge. Honestly, I feel like the uh, Rick one that we had in the last world was a lot tougher than this is. And if you couldn't tell, this uh, level is actually really cool because it's kind of a reprise of all the enemies we fought throughout the entire game. And you can actually go around grabbing uh, power-ups if you uh, just explore every room pretty thoroughly. You'll see some health packs so you can grab health whenever you need them. Uh, there'll also be a bunch of free lives available for you, too, so this is also a good level to kind of stock up on uh, goodies and stuff if you didn't get much throughout the game. And again, it's just really cool how this works. Also, can I grab these or did I need that guy? I think I probably needed that guy. Yep. Oh well, let's keep moving. Okay, watch out for those guys. I don't think every enemy in the entire game will appear in this level, but most of them. If I had to give a percentage, I'd probably say about 95%. I think there's one or two that don't make an appearance. Like, I don't think the Pac-Man uh, Snapdragon things actually appear here. But we get all the others, including the uh, Thwomp ripoffs, like these guys. Also, the fire ability is very good for this level, I feel, because you can uh, basically destroy a lot of stuff in front of you. It may not work for some rooms, and you have to kind of maneuver it like this a little bit, but... I mean, for the most part, you can get a lot of things from a distance, and that's always very helpful. Definitely something to use to your advantage, I guess you could say. Plus, again, he's Nago, so he has the triple jump. Another thing that's also very handy to make use of while you're getting through a level like this. Also, fun fact about Nago, uh, I actually got, actually got pointed this out a few times. Uh, Nago is supposed to be a male. I'm pretty sure that's a common fact. But the way his uh, fur is, like the design of the colored parts of his fur, apparently it's supposed to suggest that Nego is a female. Like his uh, fur patterns, apparently that's exclusive to female cats or something like that. I don't know, I'll have to uh, review my sources and see what exactly was said, but I'm pretty sure that's what was told of me. If so, that is very interesting, but I'm pretty sure that Ma Nago is supposed to be a dude, though. Also, sorry you two, I can't take you, I have to bring Nago here. You guys aren't going to appreciate what's at the very end of the level, Nago probably would. Also, yes, nice free life down there. Gotta enjoy those free lives. Also, yeah, I don't know what's up with those propeller guys. I, I, I could have sworn that in the second game, like, if you got hit by them, the animal buddies would disappear, but I don't think that happens here. I don't know why they took that out. I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong, but still, it's kind of weird how that happened. Yeah, a lot of these rooms you can actually just skip- oh god! Tongue Man! That's right, even Tongue Man makes an appearance. Uh, but anyway, as I was trying to say, um... Shoot, I don't even remember what I was trying to say. Something about, uh, awesome stuff. 
Also, there's a Batamon, the uh, Kirby lookalike. I don't think you can actually kill him. There might be one level where you can, but for the most part, he's just there as a visual effect. And yeah, let's go ahead and get the Wall of Fire back. I missed my Wall of Fire. It kept me safe. It kept me safe from attacking victims. Okay, yeah, I can tell these guys are fake. That was kind of obvious. Just, let's just have three doors laying in the middle of the road. Yeah, that's not going to be suspicious. Okay, we got the key keys. Destroy you guys. Normally, I'm not a fan of destroying witches, but... When they're trying to hurt me, I have no option. And yeah, look, even the... Paint drawings of the enemies from World uh, 4 are here too. They literally did try to bring any every enemy possible. But yeah, no, none of those yellow snapdragons. That really surprises me. I can't think of any other enemy that didn't appear, but I'm pretty sure there's others too. In fact, was Sir Kibble even here? The uh, cutter guy? I don't really remember the uh, Cubone look-alike that threw bones at you. And these guys, I don't even remember seeing these guys before. <laughs> yeah, those guys look new and different. Yeah, I have no freaking idea. Okay, let's get you over here so I can grab those health packs. Thank you, and bye. Goodbye. And I think we're actually at the home stretch. I think this is the last room, so we're finally done with this. Yeah, that was a pretty long level, I have to admit, but it wasn't too bad. A lot of the rooms were pretty easy, and you could skip through a lot of them no problem, so... Nego, you've been through a really rough journey. Here, stay here with your gal. I'm gonna leave. Okay, let's try to get the one up. Yes! Alright. See, I started to get better at the very end of the project. So I guess all that practice paid off. Oh yeah. But, let's go ahead and move on to the next and the final level of the game. Uh, final full level, I guess you could say. And, uh, because the last level was a, uh, enemy endurance, this level's actually going to be a mini-boss endurance. I know, I'm kind of spoiling it early, but... I mean, what else were they going to do for the second-to-last level of the world? I mean, come on, it's kind of obvious that it was going to go in some direction like that. I mean, this is a Kirby game. I'm pretty sure they've done that in every single Kirby game, or at least most of them, anyway. Ow. Dang it. You're a fake door. I don't like that. What about you? Dang it! Fine, I guess this is the real door. Okay, so for the heart star for this level, what you need to do is you need to use all of the power-ups. Because in every room, there's going to be a blockade that will require the power-up from the room prior to that. So, it's not really a hard heart star to get. The only way you can miss it is if you do something stupid, like kill all of the enemies, or in this case, kill the mini-boss, without grabbing the power-up. And, uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy mini-boss to kill with, uh, Ku's lightning attack. We'll take him out, no problem. Alright, there we go. Okay, there's feather number two. You can also get a health in every room, too, so that's also a really nice bonus. Let's move on to the next one. Next we have Jumper Shoot, the Parasol mini-boss. Dang it. Yeah, stone doesn't really work for this guy, so we're going to have to uh, be a little more careful here.
I think Jumper Shoot probably is one of the more annoying bosses in this game. Oh, come on. I couldn't have been that far off. That and this boss just takes a really long time, too. I prefer in the last game when he just randomly, uh, just, like, moved across the screen once and then just did his attack. Now he, like, loops around the room a few times. Okay. Give me your shoe. Thank you. Oh, nope, looks like we have one more hit left. Fine, we'll play it your way. Okay, give me your shoe. Give me your shoe. That's not giving me your shoe. I want your shoe so I can throw it at your face. There we go, my god. And there we go, there's the parasol ability. There's feather number three. And who do we have next? We have Yuki. Hello, Yuki. and we're halfway done. <laughs> Come on. Fine. Okay. Feather number four. And I believe the next thing is not a boss. We have a room full of cutter abilities. Oh, dang it, no. I swallowed two stars at once. Let's try that again. Plus also, yeah, okay, there we go. So yeah, there are no cutter bosses and there's no spark bosses in this game, which is kind of weird because there were bosses for those elements in uh, Dreamland 2. I don't know why they took those out. Perhaps they were asking too much money to come back, so HAL Laboratory was like, No! We're gonna make a broom boss! <laughs> That's pretty much what they did. <laughs> also, why would they replace Mr. Frosty with, uh, frickin' Yuki? That, that was another weird move. I mean, frickin' Frosty is, like, a classic Kirby boss. Oh, whatever, we have a broom boss. We can say that Kirby actually had a boss that was based off of a broom. Now we have the fire boss. It may not seem like it's effective using a feather duster on a giant fireball, but hey, it works. And I think we have one more, and I believe we have our good friend Captain Stitch. Who, yeah, I can't really hurt when he's, uh, in needle form. That's okay, we'll just wait till your needles are gone. Sounds like an idea to me. Okay, there we go. And, uh, that should actually do it for this level. Yep, there's the exit right there. Grab the feather, grab some health. Now... I'm actually going to do something very controversial right here. I'm actually not going to be grabbing this heart star. Now you're probably thinking, Slim Kirby, are you crazy? 
Yeah, see, I'm pretty crazy. But there is actually a reason why I'm doing this, because this game actually has two endings. And if we want to get the quote-unquote bad ending, we can't have all the hard stars. So uh, we're going to go ahead and show that ending off in this video, and then we'll show the good ending in the next video. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and fight what is the supposed final boss of the game, King DDD. He works pretty much in the same fashion as he has in all the other games. He has his jump attack, he has his patented hammer attack, and he also tries to swallow you every now and then, too. So yeah, nothing really that different. He doesn't even have hyper mode like he did in Dreamland 2. He got rid of that for this game. Oh yeah, very simple boss. However, this guy does have a second phase, so we have to take him out again. This time, we can tell that he's obviously being controlled again. Probably by the same forces that took him over in the second game. He has two attacks. He has his uh, Pac-Man attack, which he just showed, and he has this uh, Eye Orb attack. Only way you can t attack him is if you use the uh, eye orbs right back at him. Uh, also, if you have any power ups, that will work too, obviously. But right now, we're going to focus just on taking him out with the eye orbs. It's really not that hard. It may seem kind of tricky at first, especially when it comes to hitting him with the eye orbs because he fires three at once, but honestly, if you just grab one, run under him, and. Uh, fire at him very quickly, you can usually get one or even two shots on him, maybe even all three if you're lucky. It's really not too bad. Also, whenever he does that Pac-Man attack, I just picture him saying, waka waka waka. <laughs> How could you not, though? I mean, come on, it looks like Pac-Man. A more demented Pac-Man that has a penguin body and uh, sharp teeth, but still Pac-Man. Yeah, got another good two hits on him right there. One more hit should do it. And... There we go! King DDD has been defeated. Gooey, go away. <laughs> this victory does not concern you. You didn't help throughout the entire game. But yeah, there we go. That's the uh, bad ending. Although I wouldn't really call this a bad ending. It's more of an unfinished ending. The Kirby games are known for having that. I mean, hell, Dreamland 2 had it. Uh, Kirby's Adventure, I think, had it. And, uh... Yeah, pretty much every game. Crystal Shards. Although Crystal Shards' bad ending was, like, creepy. With the freaking queen going all psycho. But, uh... Yeah. This is just an ending. It's not a good ending, necessarily. It's just unfinished. But during this, we'll see Kirby and Gooey skip home while we take a look at the enemy roll call. Admire all the lovely enemy names. Like Blipper and uh, Kapal and Moni and Bobbin. Joe the Shark. <laughs> Joe the Shark for Super Smash Bros. 4. <laughs> oh, Joe the Shark. <laughs> That's funny, I can't, I can't help it. That's funny.
There's our good friend Pelu. And then Pacto. But yeah, that's gonna essentially do it for uh, this ending. Uh, they're gonna go through the last few names and then the mini bosses, but after that, that's gonna be it. So, uh, yeah, next video, we're actually going to uh, actually grab the last Heart Star and uh, we're actually gonna beat this game and see the good ending. After this ending, though, we are left with one tiny cliffhanger. As we gaze into the sky, and as we truly wonder, what the hell is this thing? See you next time, Star Warriors.